In this short video, we're going to look at uh, how you can get access to the build agent that AppVair uses to actually run your build uh, every time you do a, a commit into your source control repository. One of the best things about AppVair is that it is a cloud hosted continuous integration server. So you don't have to worry about keeping the server up to date, applying security patches, all the tasks, all those mundane tasks that need to be done once you have a, an in-house continuous integration server. AppVair takes control of all of that for you. One of the worst things about AppVair is that it's a completely cloud-hosted continuous integration service. So what I mean by that is when a build isn't working correctly and there's one of those hard to debug, hard to figure out what's going on issues, you don't have access to the server. Sometimes when that's happened in the past, I've resorted to doing console outputs uh, during the build pipeline to try and figure out what's going on. But one of the nice features that AppVair has is that it gives you RDP access, remote desktop connection access to the build server, either uh, at the start of the build or at the end of the build to try to identify what's going on. So this, in this video, I'm going to talk you through exactly how you do that. Now, what you're looking at here is that the, in the AppVair documentation, it kind of walks you through exactly on how you how, what you need to do. But what I want to do is just to uh, briefly go through it uh, in video format, just so you can see it happening. So the first thing it tells you you need to do is you need to provide uh, a password uh, to access the server once it has been created. Now, what's not noted here is that the, the password you provide here uh, is subject to the standard password complexity rules. So you will need a mixture of lowercase and uppercase letters, uh, numbers, uh, special characters, that sort of thing. If you don't do that, you will get a build error uh, saying that the provided password uh, isn't complicated enough. So what we can do is if we jump over here into our settings, so this is a, an AppVair project that I've created for the purposes of this demo. What we'll do in, under the environment tab, if we jump into it, then just go ahead and add your pass, uh, add the available name here, AppVR RDP password, and provide the password, and then just go ahead and hit save. The next thing we need to do is we need to enter either the an init command or an on finish command into your AppVR.yaml file. So I've chosen to uh, use this on finish one. So over here in my AppVR.yaml file, you see that I've added uh, the on finish command with this uh, command, which is essentially executing uh, a PowerShell script to get that uh, RDP connection information for you uh, in order to, to make a connection. What you also see is that this build really isn't doing anything. All I'm, all I'm doing here is I'm echoing out uh, just test build as part of the build log. So let's jump to our AppVair project and let's go ahead and create a new build. What you're seeing here is the, the old one. I, I ran a build just before starting this video. So this is the new build starting. So what you'll see here is the build once the build starts it'll echo out that test build uh, console output and then what we'll see is it executing the the powershell uh, script and then we'll see some connection details so now that we've got this we've got the connection information that we need we've got the ip address and the port number to use and then a username and then obviously the password that we put into the environment section of the uh, project is what we're going to use to connect so just go ahead and open up an rdp connection so that's just using the MSTS, MSTSC command line. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this IP address and port number. And let's just drop that into there. And then on here, I'm going to use the username of AppVair and I'm going to use the password I put in before. And then that's going to give us that RDP connection. It's going to log us into the remote server. So you'll see straight away that this is uh, a Windows Server 2012 R2. That's what I've got configured within my appvair.yaml file. And then we've got access to all of the programs that are installed, the Visual Studios, uh, and then the services, the SQL Server that you may have activated on your, your build server. Then we've also got access to the file system. So if we look at the build log here, you'll see that my project's files have been uh, get cloned into the C projects at fair demos folder. So if you were concerned that as part of the build, a specific artifact hadn't been created, or you thought there were some missing files or something going wrong with the build, you can navigate directly to that within the, within the RDP session. So here, we're just going to go into C, we're going to go to projects, and then we've got the AppVair demos folder. So these are the, all of the source files that have been Git cloned from my GitHub repository onto the server, ready for looking at basically. So here you've got time to uh, 
look at those files, try and figure out what's going on with the build, make your corrections uh, into your build script or whatever mechanism you're using, and then run the build again. Now, this is not a, a server that you will have access to all the time. This RDP session is only active for 60 minutes. So you, you have, it's intended as a debugging tool, not as a, a mechanism for running long uh, running services or anything like that. It's literally just to let you see what's going on with the build in order to, to diagnose what's going on. So what you'll actually see here, so this, this build that we started, it's actually essentially in a hung state. It's going to sit like this until that 60 minutes is up, or we can actually uh, end the build. And that's what this delete me to continue build.txt file is on the desktop here. If we go ahead and delete that file and then jump back to here, we'll see that the build has now succeeded. It's carried on and it's executed that build. If you didn't want obviously this to happen every time, what you would then need to do is jump back into your app there yaml file comment out those two lines and then save it again this time around when the next app fair build runs obviously it will run normally it won't enable that rdp connection that second time around so it'll just run the build uh, as per normal i hope that this uh, video has been useful feel free to comment in the sections below uh thank you very much